الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ صدق الله العظيم سيدنا عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنه says that once I was riding behind Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said to me يَا بُنَي O my son I would teach you some lessons, always remember them. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was a very young Sahabi. He was about 12 years old when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. So this is the hadith that he's narrating now. It's a time when he was even younger than that. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching him these beautiful lessons that is really a lesson for the ummah telling us our responsibility towards our children and how should we educate our children and teach them the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Bunay, ihfaz illaha yahfaz Oh my son, protect the deen of Allah, Allah will protect you which means always observe the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Protecting doesn't mean when someone else is attacking it and we are trying to protect it. This is when we ourselves many times when ayaz billah are destroying the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not fulfilling the orders of Allah. If a person would fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of his needs. Always protect the deen of Allah. The literal meaning is Allah. Protect Allah. Allah will protect you means protect the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always protect you. Allah tajidhu tujahak. Always fulfill the orders of Allah, protect the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would see Allah's help towards you, Allah's rahmah towards you. Tajidhu tujahak. You would see Allah's mercy coming towards you. Ida sa'alta fas'alillah. And whenever you need to ask someone for something, always ask Allah. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ If you need any help, always ask Allah's help. What a beautiful lesson. That is being taught to that child at the time, and really it's a lesson that we who have been practicing this deen for so many years, we need to keep on revising this lesson over and over. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ Whenever you ask, you need to ask for something, ask Allah. <coughs> Whenever you need any help in your life, fasta'in billah. Always seek Allah's help. Wa'alam anna al-ummah law ijtama'u ala an yanfa'uk lay yanfa'uk illa bi shay'in qad katabahu Allah lak. And always remember, if the whole ummah, which means the whole world, will get together to benefit you, to do something for you. They will not be able to benefit you except if Allah has written that thing for you. If the whole world will get together to harm you, they will not be able to harm you if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not predestined that thing for you. If that hardship is not written for you, 
they will not be able to harm you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is really teaching us how to keep our fullest connection and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we always ask Allah, we always seek Allah's help, and we always realize that every benefit and harm in this life is in Allah's control. No one else controls it. And if we really look at what's keeping people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Normally, the thing that is keeping people away from Allah and from deen is something that has been answered in this hadith, in this short hadith. Because the thing that is keeping us away is either hope or fear. One of the two things. Either we have a lot of hope from someone and just running after those people. And because of that we are giving up the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Too much hope from our factory, too much hope from our degrees, too much hope from our education, too much hope from our own abilities, depending on them. That because of this, the person does not keep his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At certain time, when a person is keeping too much hope from something else, feels that this thing is enough for me. This thing will do it for me. My need will be fulfilled through this. Oh, this person said, come tomorrow and I will do your work. Since the whole hope now is from this person, so the person now, we will go to bed at rest, no dua, no prayer, no turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this person would do it, he said he would do it. Applied for a job, the person who was taking the interview, he said, yes, sure, we will give it to you. Don't worry about anything. Now the fullest hope is in this person. The hopes are not connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. I have my job. My job is secure. I have a business. I have this much money. So now the full hope is on my money, is on my job, on my ability. This is something that normally keeps us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having hopes from others. And of course, we all have our needs in this life. And needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have designed the world is that our needs are being fulfilled through each other. One person is in a construction field, so he will build a house. The other person is an architect, he will design it. Then we have a plumber, we have electrician, we have all of those people. Then we have people who say, yes, they will come and clean it. Someone will say, I will come and put the carpet. So our needs are being fulfilled through each other. And when we are doing this work, getting the work done through others, our full hope is from this person. He said, I will do it in two weeks. So... This work will be done in two weeks. Now, the person is totally, totally cutting in this sense, is cutting his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No more connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding this field of life. I have the money, the contractor will do the work, and my house will be ready. The other thing that is keeping us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fear. When we have fear of others more than we pray, we have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this person can make me lose 
my job, he can make me lose my status, he can make me lose whatever I have. So now, so much fear from someone. And now because of that fear, since our fear is connected to this person, we are considering this person the one who controls the hardships for us in this world, in this life. That if he would open the doors of hardship for me, then I will be living in hardships and difficulties throughout my life. And because of that now, we are trying to please this person. I don't want this person to get upset with me at any time because I would go through hardships. The doors of problems will open up only if this person will be upset. So I have to keep him happy. And of course, this is what's happening with a lot of us, majority of the people that are going against deen, against the orders of deen, against the orders of sharia. When we are not fulfilling the orders of Allah, it's because of that fear. Most of the time, shaitan brings that fear into our hearts and minds. And related, this fear would be from others. Because of fear of others, the person does not want to do the salah. Why? If people will see me making the salah, they may, I may get laid off from this job. I can't keep the beard because if people will see me with it, I will lose my respect. I will lose my status. If I dress like this in this neighborhood, you know all the people are very rich over here. I dress like this in this neighborhood, then they will try to get me out of here. So fear connected to people. They fear people the way they are supposed to fear Allah and even more than that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith is teaching us that our hopes and fear should always be connected to only Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is nothing that will keep this person away from deen. Very simple method. All difficulties are gone. There is no more difficulty anymore. That's it. This person who connects his hope and fear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's it. From that day on, this person has no difficulty whatsoever in his life to practice this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just these two things. Hope and fear connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are afraid of their wives. If I keep the beard, my wife will not like me. I mean, it's all in the hands of Allah. Love and hatred in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one controls these things besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We try our best and still after all people are not happy with us. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the dunya, came to, went to Medina Munawwara after hijrah, those people of Medina, they were divided in a lot of groups. And they were always in war against each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran al kareem says, وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah joined their hearts through the barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah brought their hearts together. لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ If you spend the whole world, the wealth that is in the world, and you spend that whole world to bring these hearts together, you cannot bring these hearts together. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ Allah is the one who brought these hearts together. Everything is in Allah's control. We try to please people by displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get nowhere with it. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, 
asked Aisha radiallahu anha for a very short advice. He said, make it very short and brief so that I can remember it all times. She said to him, if you try to please people by displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people will be displeased and Allah will be displeased. And if you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ignoring what people want from you, she doesn't say by displeasing people or by pleasing them. Ignoring what people from want from you, if you just please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased and Allah will bring the hearts of people towards you. But this is not something that we are looking for that people's heart will come towards us and people love us. In fact, we always find our mashayikh, our ulama, and from the time of Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, they always wanted to be totally unknown. They didn't want to become fam famous people. They didn't want people to love them, to respect them. They were not looking for these things. All they are looking is, I want Allah to love me. I want my connection with my Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be only through this. When our hopes and fears are totally connected to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say, La ilaha illallah. This is what we need to remind our souls. That there is only Allah. There is no one that can benefit me in this life at all except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one can hurt me in this world except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can happen without it. We are really being fooled by our nafs and shaitan that are trying to pr prove to us in different ways that no, it's really this person. It's really this job. And then we just run after these things. We become the servants of these things. We start serving these things to the extent when people started worshipping idols. What was the reason of worshipping those idols? Nothing but hope and fear. The same thing. Subhanallah, when shaitan and our nafs start making, playing with us, and when they keep on deceiving us and cheating us and giving us wrong information, they put the person so low and so much misinformed that finally this person would feel that my hopes are connected to this stone. This stone will fulfill my needs. Or fears are connected to it that if I, this stone can harm me. If I don't worship it, then this stone will harm me. You know, there was a lot of time uh, we see that dream. There was, I don't know, Allahu Alam, who made it? Which shaitan made that? That dream that a, some uh, says that someone, a sheikh in Medina Munawwara, saw this dream. And he saw the Prophet ﷺ in his dream, whatsoever, you know, it's just all false dreams. And at the end it says, if you make these many copies of this dream, your job will be secure, you will get this benefit and these benefits. And if you don't make these copies, then there is a great fear that you will lose your job, you will have hardships at your home, and you will have difficulties, and I mean, all kinds of things. Now, there are really a lot of our people that would make copies of it just in case. You know, he feels, you know, it only cost me $5 or $2, $3, whatever. Just in case, you know, what if this will happen? Let me just make some copies of it. This shows us how weak our iman is. The weakness of the iman. Then people would come and put it in the masajid. Destroying their iman and destroying other people's iman. Subhanallah, we don't distribute the copies of Quran and nothing happens. And you don't distribute the copies of that dream and you will be in difficulty. This dream became more important than the book of Allah. But it's the weakness of Iman. And in reality you see that the Iman is totally gone in that situation when the person would just feel that this piece of paper and distributing this dream will protect me against the hardships and difficulties. 
So same thing with the kuffar, we read the Qur'an, they were really, when they were worshipping these idols, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Qur'an, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ Ask them, who created them? They will say Allah. They never claimed that this idol created me. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ Ask them, who created the heaven and the earth? They will say Allah. Imran ibn Hussain radiallahu anhu, his father Hussain, came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started talking to him about deen, inviting him to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is continuously rejecting it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Kam ta'abudu al-yawma min ilah? How many idols do you have today that you worship in these days? How many that you have your own that you worship? So he said, Saban. I have seven of them. Sitten fil ard wa wahid fil sama. Six on this land, my home and around me, and one on the heaven, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, At the time of hardships and difficulties, who do you call? You are in the middle of the ocean. You are in the middle of the jungle and you get stuck over there. Now the six are in your home. Which one are you going to call? He said, Allah fi sama, the one that's in the heaven. So he said, then at the time of hardships, you would call him. When you don't see these around you, you would call him. So then why don't you just worship him alone? Finally, he was convinced and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the hidayah and he accepted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He took the shahada. But the point is, they always realized that Allah is the creator. These things are not creators. But their hopes and fear were attached to them. That was the only problem. Their hopes and fear were attached to these. As they used to even scare Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you do something, if you talk against our idols, they may do some harm, they, cause you, they will cause some harm to you. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu was sent by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to kill some of the big idols, Manat and Lat. When he went to kill them, the person in charge over there, he just stood on the side, he said, are you really going to touch these idols? They are going to really destroy you. This is his belief, his fear is attached to them. They are going to destroy you. And of course, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, what he would care about, who would destroy me? He is a Sahabi, subhanAllah, once at the battlefield and just before the war would start, they presented some drink to him that was full of poison. And they used to, in those days, as books have narrated and narrate the story, they say they used to call it Summu Sa'a. It's a poison that kills in a minute. The strongest poison that they had, they gave it to him. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. He took it in his hand, then he says to the person who brought it to him, he said, don't you think that I know that this is poison? Of course, when you would come and give me a drink at this time, what does that mean? You are going to give me some juice right now? And then he stands in front of that army. And he recites the dua. Bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma ismihi shay. And continues, he recites the whole dua. And he drinks it right. He's standing there. He drinks the whole thing in front of them. And they're looking at him. When is he going to fall? And he's, his iman is, what this poison can do? Can it hurt without the permission of Allah? This poison can never hurt me without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has no power to hurt. This is, this is iman, really. When the hope and fear, see the level now. When the level of iman gets to that level, to that height, that really no fear of anything whatsoever. There is no fear of enemy, there is no fear of sword, there is no fear of weapon, there is no fear of poison, there is no fear of lions, there is no, nothing, nothing. There is nothing in this world that scares these people. 
That was the, this, that was the thing that enemies always have difficulties with in those days. That these people, nothing scares them in the world. I think it was Uqba bin Amir radiallahu anhu when he went to one of the rulers over there. He was cold and he went there and they really made a beautiful setup. You know, a setup where as soon as you enter there, it would be scary for a newcomer. And the king is sitting, the ruler who the commander in chief is sitting on a couch and with a crown on his head and gold and silver and armies standing all around him. They are full of weapons and he goes with some old clothes that have a lot of patches on it. And he has an old sword in his hand and a spear that is not even long enough. And he doesn't even take a horse. He goes on a donkey. He goes over there <laughs> and takes his donkey all the way up to the carpet. They're asking to keep it outside. I said, no, I won't keep it out there. If you don't want me to come, I'll go back. And he walks that way. Then and the king they told the ruler that he, this is how he's coming and he doesn't, want to put, he doesn't even want to put his sword and his spear away. He wants to come with it. He's saying, you know, you call me. If you don't want me to come, I'll just go back. I don't need to talk to you. You people want to talk to me. So he said, you know, these people, they don't, just as we may call it, you know, these people are crazy. Just leave them. Let them do, let them, him do whatever he wants. Just let him come. I need to talk to him. And he goes in there. First thing he sees a beautiful pillow and uh, something like a couch. With his spear, he makes a big hole in it. Put his rope to tie his donkey with it. And as he's walking, he makes sure that as he's walking, he keeps on leaning on his spear to make hole wherever he steps. In the carpet, in the couch, on the pillows. He's making holes. And he goes and he sits next to the ruler. So people told him, no, no, you can't sit there. You have to sit down. Why? Who is he? You people worship him? He's supposed to be worshiping Allah. And the beautiful statement that one Abu Hassan Ali Nadwi Rahmatullahi Ali made on this. He said, before anything and before even the battle, Uqba bin Amir radiallahu anhu, he had won the battle just by his action. He won the battle just by his action where this person who is going in this situation, everyone is scared of this person now where the setup was to scare him. But nothing could scare this person. Nothing could impress him. He wasn't impressed by anything that he sees over there. These things are not impressing at all for him. And now for the ruler, for people around him, this man is so impressing. And they look at him, nothing is really scares him. He doesn't care about this. He sees the most expensive rides, he sees the best weapons in the world, he sees everything, but nothing. You know? What does these things mean? His trust is fully in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all. To them, these things mean meant nothing really. So this is this. when the hope and fear is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Then this world is yours. Then nothing can scare this person, nothing can take this person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem, alladhi khalaq, fasawak, fa'adalak. Who is deceiving you about your Rabb? Who is telling you that he can help you more than your Rabb? Who he can love you more than your Rabb? He can have mercy in, to you more than your Rabb? He be kind to you more than your Rabb? Who is telling you that, O oh, oh insan? O oh, human being, who is taking you away from your Rabb? He created you. He perfected you. He did everything for you. So why are you going to others? Today we are knocking at every door in the world. And people, they know that we depend on them. Therefore, they are closing our doors, their doors on us. We, subhanAllah, we went so low that we even made our deen dependent on people who don't even believe in it. 
That if they would allow us, if they would okay it, if they would sign the papers, they would sign the agreement, then only the deen would be followed. Otherwise, this deen cannot be followed in this, this world. Allah needs permission from the kuffar to establish his deen. But our hopes are attached over there. Our fears are all directed to that side. And that is the main thing. If our hope and fear, these two things, these two things that we all need to work on, anything in this dunya tries to tell us that I would do something for you, no, you can't do nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the doer. Anything in this dunya tries to scare us that you will hurt, you will lose, you, this will happen, nothing can happen. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the doer of everything. Hope and fear has to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then all the doors of Rahmah and Nusra will open up, inshallah. And mainly for ourselves, our Iman will get proper, our Iman will be perfect, our Iman will be where it's supposed to be, our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the doer of everything. Not these stones, subhanallah. Now those people used to worship with stones and their hopes were totally, totally attached to these stones. We went even lower than that. Our hopes are attached to pieces of paper. We may call them dollars. But the whole hope is just attached to this. I don't have my wallet, I'm nothing. Full hope is just attached to these things in this dunya. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching that. He taught us a beautiful lesson. See how he's teaching these children their iman. As they're growing, their iman is there. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةِ لَوِ اجْتَمَعُوا Remember, if the world will get together to benefit you, oh my son, they can never benefit you. It's Allah. Allah is the one who can give you anything if He, if he wants to give you. وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ If they get together to hurt you, they can never hurt you if Allah doesn't want that for you. That's the Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this full Iman in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala that our hopes and fear are always attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connected with Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have this firm Iman that no one can benefit and no one can hurt in this dunya without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the doer of all these things. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب